This is the third section of chapter six, further hypothesis tests, and this section is on the F distribution. Now the F distribution is used to test if the variances of two uh, normal distributions are equal. The F distribution gives us critical values to carry out the hypothesis test. Now in this section, we're not gonna be carrying out the hypothesis test. We're just going to be looking at how we can find these critical values and what we need to look out for uh, in the F distribution. Now, the reason we can use this F distribution is the ratio of the sample variances of two normal distributions uh, follow this F distribution. So I've got two populations. I find a sample of one, I work out its variance, uh, it's population X. I find a sample of population Y. I work out its variance. If I divide one by the other, I'll get a value and it follows this F distribution. Now you'll notice that I've got these two things here. This is new one and new two. These are degrees of freedom. And uh, it has two parameters, this F distribution. So we need to work out what these two um, degrees of freedom are. Now, the first degree of freedom, mu, uh, nu 1, we get that from the number in our sample from population x minus 1, a bit like n minus 1. And nu 2, the uh, second value for the degrees of freedom, is the number in our y population, the sample, again minus 1. Now I've drawn like a little sketch of what an F distribution might look like. Now the way that the tables work, they give you the area to the right that exceeds a particular value. So the um, areas are to the right and the table goes gives you areas of 5% and 1%. 5% is the top half of the table, 1% is the lower half of the table. Now that's straightforward if I want to work out, let's say um, an upper critical value, because I could just look the value up in the table um, and that will give me whatever this upper limit is. So for my upper limit, I go across by my first uh, value, my first degrees of freedom. So in the table, you go across with this value for the second value in the table, you go down. So let's say this was at five and eight degrees of freedom. It means you go across to where you see five and then you go down to where you see eight. And it's going to either be for 5% or 1%. So I said 5% is the top part of the table and 1% is for the lower part of the table. Now, all of these can be worked out on the CG50. It's very straightforward. Um, I'll run through how you do it in a moment. I think I'll do it on one of the examples as well. But yeah, upper limit, you just look it straight up in the table because the area that's given at the side is basically the area on the right. Now we need to do a little bit more work if I want to find a lower critical value um, because a lower critical value, for example, so let's say we had a critical value down there. So let's get rid of these here and um, so now this becomes a critical value the table um, or is it's basically this area but the table doesn't have 95 percent for example if this area here is five percent that i want for the lower critical value or one percent down here which would mean this is 99 percent so lower critical values you can't just read off from the table so let's say i want to find a lower critical value for an f distribution that has these two degrees of freedom the way that we work that out is i do one over the f distribution but with the two degrees of freedom reversed so if this was an f distribution with five and eight this would be eight and five. So you swap those over and then we can use the table. And then here, this would be either 5% or 1% depending on the question. So we have to do this for the 
uh, lower limit. So upper limit, straightforward, you just read it off from the table, that's fine. For the lower limit, because um, the table only gives areas to the right, and it only gives areas to the right of 5% and 1%, so that wouldn't be the case here. This would actually be 95% to the right, but the table doesn't have 95%, only has 5 and 1. So we need to flip once, which is the reciprocal of this. Flip again, which means flip these two, and then flip the area. Because actually what we would have had, let's put it over here, on this side for the lower is F new 1 new 2. And in the brackets here, this would be uh, either 5% or 1%. So for the lower critical value, we need to basically reciprocal, flip the numbers, and basically um, we, we sort of have to flip the area as well because this may actually be written here. I'll show you a different way this could be written. So it could be written like this. So V1, V2, we may have 95% here or 99%. This is a lower tail value. Now it may not seem it because we're thinking, well, hang on, it's the area going up to that point. Well, this is the area on the right hand side. So if you see this 95 or 99, this is actually a lower tail value. Example four, use the table to find in part A here, the F distribution value um, where we've got a 5% significant level critical value and we've got degrees of freedom of five and eight. Right, now this first one I'll do on the CG50, but the rest I'll just use the table for, so you can see I can use the CG50. So you want to do menu and two to get you to do statistics. You then press S5 to get distributions. You press F4 to get the F distribution. And then lastly, F3 to do inverse F, since we have an area and we want to find a value. Okay, so when you do that, you can see it asks for list or variable. We're just going to go for variable. Area will type in as 0.05. Then it gives the degrees of freedom as N and D. So that'll be your 5 and your 8. And we press execute once we typed all those in. And I get a value of 3.6874. Uh, and if you use the tables, you'll get a value of 3.69. So you can see to two decimal places, it's the same. Okay. Um, as I said, for the rest of these questions, I'm just going to use the table. So for the second one, we have an S distribution with eight and five degrees of freedom and an area to the left of 5%. That's 4.82. Now, just be aware that the first degree of freedom is along the uh, row of the table. So you go across the second degree of freedom, you go down the column. So make sure you don't or you read it uh, the right way around. Example five, find upper critical values for and part A we have F distribution with eight and 10 degrees of freedom. And we want to find this upper critical value. So this is where everything flips. So it's one over the F distribution with 10 and eight degrees of freedom. So you flip those. And then we flip the um, percentage as well. So it becomes 5%. So that'll be one over and I'm using the tables. So 10 across, eight down, I get 3.35. So um, one divided by 3.35. Now, since the tables only go to two decimal places, 
I'm only going to give my answers to two decimal places. Uh, so 1 divided by uh, 1, uh, 3.35. Obviously, if you're using the calculator, then um, you're going to get uh, more accurate answers rather than just rounded to decimal places. But we're using uh, something that's rounded to two decimal places here. So this is what my calculator gives me. So rounded to two decimal places is going to be 0 0.30. So that's 2 dp. Right, moving on to part B. Um, we want again to find an upper critical value for an F distribution with 10 and 8 degrees of freedom. So it's the opposite way around to the previous one. 0.95. And that's going to be 1 over um, 8 and 10 degrees of freedom at 0.05. So remember to flip everything around from the table. That's 3.07. So we're going to do the reciprocal of that. So 1 divided by 3.07 on my calculator gives me 0.3257 and so on. Table's given to two decimal places, so I'll give my answer to two decimal places. So 0.33 to two decimal places. Example six, find the lower and upper 5% critical values for an F distribution with A and B as our degrees of freedom in each of the following cases. So part A, we're going to find our F distribution with six and 10 degrees of freedom at the 5% mark. So this is a, a value that we can just look up in the table. So that's six across and 10 down 3.22 and then for my other critical value that's f610 at the 95 percent mark and to work that out that's going to be 1 over f distribution with 10 and 6 degrees of freedom at the 5 percent mark so that's going to be 1 over so 10 across and 6 down is 4.06 so let's work out what 1 divided by 4.06 is on our calculator so 1 divided by 4.06 50 over 203 and it's 0 0.2463 and so on we want to give answers to two decimal places because what we've used from the table is rounded to two decimal places. So 0 0.25, that's 2 dp. So obviously my lower critical value is the smaller value, which is the 0 0.25. So I'll just put lower is equal to 0 0.25, 2 dp. And my upper is equal to 3.22. And again, that's two decimal places, but that's from the table. We already know it's rounded. Part B, F distribution with 12 and 8 degrees of freedom. Again, at the 5% point, we can read this from the table. So 12 across and 8 down, I see 3.28, 3.28. And then for my other value at the 95% point, that's 1 over F with 12, 12, the other way around, 8 and 12 degrees of freedom at the 5% point. So that's going to be 1 divided by, so it's got 8 across, 12 down, and that takes me to 2.85. Let's see what that gives us. 1 divided by 2.85, 50 over, 20 over 57, which is 0 0.3508, so on. Again, three, two decimal places, so 0 0.35, that's 2dp. 
So I can see that my lower value is basically what the smaller number is. And that is the 0.35. And then my upper value is the bigger one. So that's the 3.28. So I'll just highlight those answers before we move on to the next question. Example 7. The random variable x follows an f distribution with 8 and 10 degrees of freedom. Find a probability that uh, x is greater than 1 over 5.81 and less than 5.06. So let's first of all work out what's going on. In all of the previous examples that we've done, uh, what we've done is we have been given a area and we have found the critical values. In this question, I have the critical values. I need to work out what the areas are, and I can use the tables to do that. So here's my F distribution, and I have a value of 5.06 here, and at the other end, I have a value of 1 over 5.81. At the upper end, that came from or that 5.06 value came from an f distribution with 8 and 10 degrees of freedom and i'm going to use the table to work out what that percentage is like basically to work out what this area is here and at the lower end um, it was the 5.81 that i would have got from the f distribution with 10 and 8 degrees of freedom and again, I want to work out what that area is. Now, I'm expecting, well, we know that those two areas are going to be the same. So once we've got one, we know the other as well. So let's start with this upper value here. So an F distribution with 8 and 10 degrees of freedom at a certain value, this value here, that percentage here, uh, will be greater than 5.06. So I'll just use the table and I will go 8 across and 10 down on the 5% part, 8 across and 10 down. Now that's 3.07, so that's not 5.06. So I'll go in the lower part of the table, 8 across and 10 down, and there I see 5.06. So it's in the 1% part of the table which means that this here is 1%. Okay, so we got that from the table. So that means that this area at the top here is 1%. Now we know the area at the bottom is also 1%. Now if you think about it, the only missing values they could be is either 1% or 5% because that's all we've got for our table. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. So um, 5 and now for the bottom part, 10, 8 degrees of freedom. Again, we want to find out the percentage where it gives a value greater than 5.81. The first value to be greater than that. So again, I'm not expecting it to be in the top part of the table, but I'll check anyway. 10 across, 8 down, and I see 3.35, which is not 5.81. It should be in the bottom, which is what I expect. 10 across, 8 down, 5.81. That's in the 1% part of the table, which is what we expected. The tails are both going to be identical in size, symmetrical tails. So that's also 1%. So that means that the area in the middle here is 98%. So the probability that X is greater than 1 over 5.81 and less than 5.06 is going to be equal to 98%. So there we go. And a little diagram sometimes helps with these um, types of questions. Example 8. The random variable x follows an f distribution with 6 and 12 degrees of freedom. We want to find a probability that x is less than 0.25. So the first thing I'm going to do is to draw an F distribution. So something like this. 
and then I'm just going to put that information on the table so I've got a value here which is 0.25 and my job actually is to work out this area here that will answer my question if I can find that area now the first we need to do is to uh, realize that this came from the reciprocal of something so one over something gave us that um, so if we do the reciprocal of it again we get four so we can write this down as being one over four and then this four came from the f distribution with 12 and 6 degrees of freedom and we need to use the table to work out what percentage it is to get that area so 12 and 6 degrees of freedom we want to work out the percentage and we know what the critical value is for now that is on the 5% part of the table so that's 5% okay so that means that this area here is 5% so um, to answer our question the probability that x is less than 0.25 it's five percent so on a question like this you need to work out for a lower limit it's one over something work out what that number is and then flip the degrees of freedom and find out whether it's in the five percent part top half of the table or the one percent part in the lower part of the table so you should now be able to do exercise 6c on pages 154 to 155 of the textbook.